for us to sing this song. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus one day. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my this morning but because you've made up your mind and you are not turning back because you want to see your Jesus someday that is why you are here this morning amen, amen. thank to your neighbor and say you are blessed you are blessed to be here this morning you are blessed you are the right place hospitals or when you visit uh, mortuaries, that is when you see that when you are a, a, a living being, you have to uh, uh, thank your God every day and night. Because you go to hospitals, see people lying on their bed, they can't do anything. You go to mortuaries, you see people in their coffin, they can't move, they can't talk. So, if you are alive at this moment, all that you have to do, just give God the glory. The reason why I'm saying this, I want you to dance than ever before because we're going to have our praise and worship. And I don't want to see anyone standing on the chair. I want people to move and come to the front here. If it's going to be possible, we're going to push this pulpit in the corner there. And I want everybody to be dancing. Amen. So I hand it over to the praise and worship team as we are ready to dance to the glory of God. Amen. Amen.
yourself, O Lord Almighty. Prepare yourself, O Holy Spirit. This is time for us to open our hearts out to the Lord. This is time for us to cry to the Lord. If you want your problem in your life right now to be shaken and to be removed, you need to open your hearts right now. You need to receive the Lord. You need to accept the Lord in your hearts. The Holy Spirit is here with us. It's a word two or three are gathered in my name. He are young with us. He is with us. Amen. Someone say amen. We're going to sing a song. Don't think about what other people are doing around you. If someone's kneeling down crying, don't think about that. It's between you and your God. You are here for him. You're not here for anyone else. You are here for Christ alone. We bow down and worship. Someone sing me. Yahweh. Yes, Lord. Be ready. Receive. Wipe your hearts. Oh, Lord. We bow. Someone sing and worship. Oh. We bow, we bow, we bow down. Oh, we bow down and worship. Oh, Lord, yeah. Someone sing from your heart. Oh,
the Lord has done for you. Think about how far He has brought you. Think about how many trials you've been through in your life right now. Think about how many trials you've been through in your life. The Lord Almighty, He is the living God. He is, He was yesterday. He is today and He is forever Lord. Exalt Him and Lord. He is our living God. He is the loving God. He is the great God. He is the supreme God. Lord, we come to you right now, Lord. Lord, we confess, Lord, we bow to you, Lord. Lord, we bow to you right now, Lord. We bow to you right now, Lord. We bow to you, Lord. We exalt the name of our Lord. Thank you, Lord. If this is your glory, oh Lord. If this is your power, someone sing from your heart. Oh, if this is your presence, yes, 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 yes. And let it. One more time. If this is your glory, if this is your power, you are singing to Lord Almighty. Yes, Lord. If this is your breath, someone revive yourself right now. Oh, let it. If this is your glory, if this is your power, you cannot hear me.
We are so hungry for your word, Lord. We are so hungry for you, Lord. Like the woman with an issue of blood, Lord. All she wants to do is just touch your clothing, Lord. She just wants to touch you, Lord, and she needs you to be healed, Lord. Lord, we want to feel your touch, and we know we will be set free from the bondage, Lord. We thank you for her, Lord. And glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy to be in such an awesome presence? Aren't you happy? Yeah. Amen. Without much waste time, this morning we have in our midst a wonderful man of God. He's a papa in this house. Some of us know him already, but he's here this morning to bless us. And are we ready for that? These days, if you, went, if you want men of God, you have to pay money. Sometimes you have to be in the queue before you can get them. But we are blessed this morning. As soon as we call him, he said, yes, he's ready to come. Amen. And with a big clap offering, I want you to appreciate and welcome man of God, Reverend Eva Sanso to be How here with us. Know? Hey, he will hey, in this way. Hey, Amen. You know? And you know something? I know this man... I can't, I can't explain it this morning. If I want to explain it, we will leave here. But all that I want you to do is just let your mind be here. Open your heart and you receive something. There, there, there was a revival uh, some couple of weeks ago. And when I went to that revival, our papa preached there. And I'll tell, it, it changed my life completely. Because of some of the things that he said, I just kept quiet and sit down. So I'm telling you, if you want something to take part in your life this morning, be attentive, let your mind be here, open your heart to the man of God, and something richly is coming to you that you cannot buy it with money, but it's only listening to the voice of the man of God. Amen. And before we, we, we listen to the man of God, I just want you to be in spirit as we sing this song to welcome the word of God. He says, I go He's a awesome God He came From heaven above So Let none live here the same. Amen. 
For we are come unto you, O God, the author and the finisher of our faith. No one can do what you do, and no one can reverse what you have said. And upon your word we stand, that say Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, declaring in his name, now let God arise in our midst and let every enemy be scattered. Let the power of God move mightily, oh God, and touch our lives. Transform our destinies and give us hope in the future. Change the stories, oh God, and open a new page for us. Let somebody encounter with your word and turn around, oh God. Let the weak be strong. Let that who weep, oh God, stop weeping. Let it be no more be said, oh God, that there is a rejection. For Father, today, oh God, speak that we may hear your voice. No man has a word for man, but you has a word for us. Open the eyes of understanding unto divine revelations. Speak to our hearts. Let us receive you into our spirit. Let our life today, oh God, never be same again. In the name of Jesus. We come against any power. We destroy every veil. We remove every covering. And we declare in the name of Jesus that Jesus is Lord. In this moment, in this presence, in this minute, in the name of Jesus. Rule, oh God, in our midst. And let your name be glorified. We declare that in this atmosphere and in this environment, the blood voice is what we hear. The voice of Jesus is what we hear. The voice of the Holy Ghost is what we hear. The voice of God the Father is what we hear. We thank you, oh God, that you will do what no man can do and take all the glory. Heal the sick, deliver the afflicted, Set the captive free. Open the eyes of the blind. Open the ears of the dead. Have your way, O oh God. Let the name of Jesus alone be seen and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout Amen. amen. Somebody shout Amen. Somebody shout Amen. Keep standing, please. Isaiah 43, verse number 13. He said, Indeed, before the day I was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and no one will reverse it. Before the day I was, and I am he, says the Lord. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work. And who? That's the question. We'll reverse it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Bring out the blind people who have eyes. That's the hope of glory. And the deaf who have ears, thank God that we still have our eyes. Thank God that we still have our ears. Thank God that we can hear again. And thank God that we can see again. Amen. Amen. There is no hope for that one whose eyes have been removed. And there is no hope for that one whose ears have been chopped off. But thank God by his word that says that bring the blind who have still, who have eyes. And the deaf who can hear. Amen. Sometimes the enemy think, thinks that he has stolen your vision. Things that you cannot see again, but thank God the eyes are there. Bible said the day when Samson was arrested, his ears was first taken off. So even if God is restored the sight, you don't have the eyes to see. Amen. You have seen good times before, but today what you see is the hard and the bad times. But thank God you still have the eyes. You will see again. Count to two or three people. Tell them you will see again. Oh, tell them with faith. Tell them with faith. 
Tell them with faith, you will see again. Tell them you will see again. Tell them you will see again. Tell them you will see again. Hallelujah. You have heard good stories before. And you have heard good news before. But today what you are hearing is what maybe you don't want to hear. But thank God your ears are still there. And the Lord says I should tell you will hear good news again. Shake somebody say you will hear good news again. Hallelujah. Please kindly take your seat. I will not take much of your time. But I would want us to share a word of God. And then we will enter into time of prayer. Please be seated. God bless you. Amen. I salute. I thank God for giving me an opportunity to be here. Glory be to God. And as I was walking through the door, I was so glad that I'm home. I felt I'm home. Amen. Glory to God. The presence, the, 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 the enthusiasm, the joy that you are showing in the presence of God was a blessing. Amen. And I thank God that you are found in such a time like this to hold what God is doing. Amen. I thank God for the life of our dear um, pastor, the, the visionary of this ministry. Though he's not here with us, his spirit is with us. I would thank God for his life. Amen. God is doing, still working that miracle he has always done. And we believe that soon he will be here to do what God has assigned him to do. The enemy can try by his fighting a losing battle. We are serving a God who said, I will work and no one will reverse it. Amen. Amen. And so God is still in his miracle working business. And we believe that our being here this afternoon is a touch in the kingdom for deliverance unto somebody. You sitting here this afternoon is a sign of you touching the helm of the garment of Christ for somebody else's healing, somebody else's deliverance, somebody else's freedom, somebody else's joy, somebody else's miracle. And so say to yourself, I'm not living here the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless the leaders of the ministry. The Lord bless you so much that you are holding on to the vision and you are carrying the vision forward. The Lord bless you. All the workers of this ministry, the Lord bless you for the good work you're doing. Every congregation member, the Lord bless you. Your love and your care for the work of God is what matters to the Lord. Amen. And, and this show and this tells us that indeed, the man of God was not building the ministry around himself. But he was building the work of God by how God was directing him. So that even in his absence, the work of God continues. It's a joy. You might not find this in many places. Glory to God. We have come to an age and season where you, you, you find that some men of God, they cannot even move. Simply because the move of a day takes a lot of money from their hands. Glory to God. And sometimes the ministry is built around one person said that if that person is not there, the ministry collapses. But thank God that he's raising a generation where we look at the kingdom. He said, I'll build my church. I'll build my church. I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Amen. Amen. Come and take everything that I have. But you cannot take the church. That is in me. Who is the hope of glory? Christ. Hallelujah. Let the enemy battle, I mean, battle you here and there. Once you hold to your faith and your hope in Christ, ah, the Lord will build his church. That's it. You are the church, I'm the church. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm coming for my church. And you are the one God is preparing for his coming. And I thank God that you have understood this principle of the Bible and you are living by it. Good news is that the labor of your love shall always be rewarded. It will not be forgotten. 
it shall be rewarded. God bless you. Amen. Turn your Bible with me. And then we will enter into a time of prayer. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 10. But before I go there, get put on the board for me. Matthew chapter 24 from verse number 9. Let me quickly read that one. And then we will jump to Hebrew 10 from 32. Matthew 24 from verse 9. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Do you know that there are some stuff you go through not because of what, not because of what you have done but because you have confessed the name of Christ, just alone. Announcement you have made that Jesus is Lord comes with battles. Amen. And so, some people have gone ahead of us and fought these battles. Even when they did not, they have not seen the salvation, they fought the battle. Some were, some were, I mean, butchered to death some were beaten to death, some were run over, some were stoned to death, some were born in a pot. Some heads were cut off, some were buried alive with their head down. Hallelujah. Because they confessed the name of Christ. Life in Christ is not butter and bread alone. As for the provision he said I will give. And so Paul said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. He said, according to, not your riches, not your expectation, not what you think, but according to his riches in glory. The riches of God we have not seen. Oh, we have not seen all. We have not what? Sin all. This afternoon, I, I came with the grace to just talk. I mean, to share. After that, we enter into prayer. Amen. Amen. We have not seen them all yet. We have not. That's why in Jeremiah 33, verse, he said, Call upon me, and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you don't have idea or you haven't seen before. Amen. Amen. The good news here is that you still have the name of Christ. Amen. So you go through pain. You go through affliction. You go through what others have been through before and are waiting for our testimony. Heaven is waiting for me and you, our testimony. Amen. 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 I'm going to be praying for you before I leave here. That the Lord will give you a sight to see beyond the physical. Sight to see beyond what? The physical. Your eyes, the Lord is about to open your eyes to see things that ordinary men cannot see. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Heaven is waiting for your testimony. In my local dialect, excuse me just to say this in my local dialect. I'm from that part of part of Africa where uh, so many things happen. But excuse me. When you travel and you come back for your journey, they sit you down and they ask how you were. And so it's your responsibility to explain how you were. That is what heaven is waiting for us. The whole host of heaven are waiting for you to come and tell them how you came. And your testimony will have to include some of this. If your testimony has nothing to do with this, then there is a problem with you. As for the blessing you have, the riches you walk through, but you need to have a testimony of persecution, affliction, pain, sorrow, worry, 
that is part of your testimony in heaven. Why? You ask me why. Why? Because why can Jesus leave all his glory, his riches to come and then die for me and you? What is the point? Couldn't God have found somebody on earth and said, die, and I'll use your blood to pacify the sins of men? God could have done it. Hallelujah. But he sat down and saw in his mindset and his plan for man that if this life is a cost. This life you live is cost. It has a value. Every day you live, there is a value upon your, yourself that is pricey. Hallelujah. The breath we are having now, somebody who has money to pay so that they can even have a, a click, a click, just a heartbeat, but that money cannot buy. So there's a cost for the, the breath you take or the heartbeat that happens. Every heartbeat, there is a cost we cannot pay. Giving to us freely. So when you live, glorify God and thank God for his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Do not look at the food you can't put on a table. The, the clothes you cannot afford to buy. The money you don't have in your bank account. Thank God for breath of life. Because your journey to eternity is just one heartbeat. The journey of eternity as I stand here. My journey to eternity is just one heartbeat. If it fails, that's it. The next thing you know, you, you, uh, they are taking you to the grave. It's finished. One heartbeat failure taking you to where? Eternity. That means every heartbeat in the eyes of God is costly. Hallelujah. And you need to value yourself and thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Whatever it is, no matter what it is, thank God that you live. And it's an opportunity, an indication that God has not finished with you yet. You'll be delivered, afflicted. You shall be hated. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. You were born alone. How come somebody doesn't like you to live? You are born alone. You came naked. How come today there's something added to your life and somebody doesn't want to see? It's because you hold the confession of Christ. And I was, as I was saying, your testimony that Peter, Paul, the brethren, James, Stephen, the early, the, 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 the father Abraham, Isaac, and those all uh, the the, the, the men of God, the great men that have gone ahead of us are waiting for is one day your testimony to come and tell them how you came. And I believe come and he said, oh, I, I come and he said, oh, I, I suffered. Oh, what kind of suffering? Because I didn't have food to eat. Because my, I, I have problems in my marriage. That is not enough. That's not enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, in this world, you will have what? Troubles. In this world, you will have what? Troubles. But the hope is that he has overcome. And so once he overcame, we are destined to overcome. If you believe that, put your hands together for the Lord. He said, and then he said, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall what? Arise and the, the, the assignment is what? To deceive not few, not you alone, but what? Many. Recently the Lord opened my eyes and I saw something. There was an altar that is built and suddenly the altar was lifted. And under the altar, I saw many snakes, many serpents under the altar. 
and then the altar drop. And then you die. Amen. Amen. One of the meanings of this is that deception is abounding under the altar. And so be careful what you take from men and worry yourself so much with what you take from here. Because that is what is important. Glory to God. Glory to God. Maybe God has said something about your life and it is tiring to come to pass. Wait for God. It will surely come to pass. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. Because sin will abound. Because wickedness will abound. Because f- disappointment will abound. Rejections will abound. Battles will increase. F- I mean, sicknesses and diseases and attacks, troubles will increase. Bible says that many people, their love will grow cold. Do you know that when life is hard, sometimes the delight of serving God is not there. The kind of thought that goes in your mind the whole night is so more than, than even the amount of prayer you offer to God in the night. You can wake up in the night and cry because of situations. But when things are fine, you can't wake up to pray to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Two of us. Two of us. So then the Bible is showing, saying, because iniquity will abound, the love of many would what? Draw cold. And the danger is that we are living in the age where deception is making a lot of people's love for God and the things of God to grow what? Cold. Now, deception is not only when somebody come and deceive you. Situation can deceive you, make you doubt the word of God. Amen. I'll give you an example. God called Abraham. He said, I'll bless you. I'll make you father of many nations. For a good 99 years, this promise has not happened. 90 years of Sarah's life, this promise has not what happened. If it were me and you, our love for God and our hope in his word will grow cold. Why? Because time is not on your side. I'm running out. Time is not on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish to become a pilot. But I, I have not even completed, um, what do you call it? Is it GCSE or A-levels? You bombed. It didn't work. And today maybe you found yourself working in where? In maybe uh, places you don't want, but you are there. Thank God for that place. Because there's always a setup for a what? For a lifting. There's a setup for what? Lifting. Glory to God. Don't let your love grow cold because many people are throwing in the battle. Things that they want to see in life are not happening, so they are throwing in the battle and say, we, we can't fight with them. But the good news is that in the midst of where your strength has failed, that is where God begins his work. Hallelujah. If you can carry the load, how can God carry it for you? You are the grace of God told Paul. He said, This sickness, Paul said, Take this sickness away. Take God looked at Paul and said, My grace is sufficient for you. Because God will not place on your life something you cannot carry. So once you are carrying it, it means his grace is sufficient for you to carry. And it has a testimony and it has a future. Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them from them all. That's why I came here to share. Simple theme. Do not shift. Don't shift. Turn to somebody, say, don't shift. Turn to another, say, don't shift. Hallelujah. Hold on to your God in hope and in faith because your time and your season is coming. If you shift, it will miss you. If you move away, another will take your place. Hallelujah. 
Amen. The man at the pool of Bethesda said, I've been here for a long time. No one is able to help me. That's the story. So every year the story is that I have no one. Maybe that's your story in England. I have no one. The Lord knows if you have somebody, you will not look for him. And that's why he has made it you have no one. So that he can come in to sort things out for you. And I prophesy over our life that may everything that needs to be sorted in our life, God arise and sort it for us. If you believe, put your hands together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because iniquity will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Today, we are seeing iniquity all over. Sometimes the things that we are not meant to say, we say. When the world people say it is hard, we also say it's hard. Because what we see through is hard. So the fact is that things are not easy. But the truth is that, let the weak say, I'm strong. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are living in times that people believe in the fact. And not the truth. There's difference between the fact and the truth. Hallelujah. The fact is what we see. And it's fact. And if you rely on the fact, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Because it says it is difficult for what? It is easier for a camel to enter through the eye of the needle than who? A rich man enter into the kingdom of God. The fact is that if you are a rich man, you don't have a worry. And so you don't need to you don't need to worry yourself about anything. Entering the kingdom of God is easy. But to do it in the kingdom way, in Matthew chapter 5, he said, Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. Glory to God. So the kingdom business or the kingdom stuff or principle is based on truth, not on fact. Because how can I feel in my body that I'm not well? Things are really bad within me. And still so take the word of God and say, by his stripes, we are here. You have confessed this upon your life, but you still feel the pain. That means that it's not about the fact, it's about the truth. Because the fact can lead to false, but the truth can never lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen some, somebody who has been to the hospital, they have diagnosed the person with something, and the person, the doctor said, this is it. That's a fact. Written, printed, the person has it. Then suddenly God comes in, change the situation and story. The person go back, they said, oh, that thing we saw, but it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Meaning that you are not living by the fact. You are living by what? Truth. So don't shift. This is the medicine of our belief today. That if you are able to take it three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening, and even night, so let's say four times a day, confessing Christ, that the Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Every situation that said, I have come to take a seat, will lead because once they are pressing, let me read, turn with me, put something on the board for me. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse eight. Put it on board for me. Let me read something from there. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse number eight. Verse eight, for sake of time. Verse eight. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not what? Distress. How can this be if we are working with fact? How can you be troubled? Your landlord doesn't want to give you peace. If you are living in council accommodation, they always on your neck. Um, your, 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 um, your bills are piling up. Debt collectors are knocking at your door. Every time something else happens. So, you are being troubled here and there, but you say you are not distressed. No. I haven't seen it in this country before. I haven't seen it before. Depression is what we see, isn't it? And it comes out of troubles. So, somebody says, I'm depressed. Is that just happened. The person is going through some stuff, and that leads to that. 
So the fact is that if you are troubled, you will be distressed. But the truth says, we are troubled, but we are not what? Distressed. Because there's a, there's a season of trouble, and there's a season of what? Relief. I shared something the other day. said, this thing, it has an end. It has an end. And because it has an end, then Paul said, we are troubled on every side. How, what is it that you have been troubled? Every side. Sometimes there will be somewhere you have not been troubled. So you are not on every side. But here Paul was saying that we are, we are troubled on every side, yet not destroyed. We are perplexed, but not in what? Despair. In other words, we, are, we, have, we haven't given up. They look at us as nothing, but we have not given up. They look at you are not going anywhere, but you have not given up on your God. They say you are good for nothing, but you have not given up on your God. The enemy said, I will destroy you, but you have not given up on your God. Yes, you don't have what you eat, you have not given up on your God. Yes, you don't have anything in your bank account, you have not given up on your God. Yes, there is something wrong about your, your destiny, yet you have not given up on your God. Your health is not right, but you have not given up on your God. So Paul said, we are perplexed, but not in this path. I will lose hope because of what is happening to me. I will not lose hope. I don't want to shift. I still want to hold on to my God. I don't have children, yet I will not shift. I don't have job. I will not shift. I don't have stay in this car. I will not shift. I don't have what to eat. I will not shift. Glory to God. He said persecuted, but not what? Forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Maybe you are lying down. You cannot even get up. You are not yet destroyed. Ah, there is a time for somebody to be knocked down. But thank God. We are not knocked out. Amen. Amen. The fact of you being knocked down in a bout does not mean you are knocked out. Because you can rise up, shake yourself, and go back. So there is hope for them who still have eyes to see and have ears to hear. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So that's why Paul was saying that we need to have this testimonies that we were troubled on every side. But we didn't shift. That we were, we were perplexed. But we were not in despair. They persecuted us. Some of the people that went ahead of us, they caught their hands and left them to go. Some, they boiled them in a, in a hot oil. They still, they didn't die. So they left them to die in the forest. And that's out of which we had a book of Revelation. If you have not been through what you are going through, you won't have a testimony for somebody tomorrow. Glory to God. Glory to God. There are some, there's a difference between somebody that is born in this country and somebody that was born from somewhere and came here. Because that person has, a, has some experience that the one that was born and lived here had not got that experience. Amen. And that's why sometimes you see people that are born and brought up here. If God does not step in, they don't respect anything. They don't fear anything. They don't worry about anything. Because they are living in a country, born and brought up in a country where even if they don't work, they still eat. But if you are coming from where, if you don't eat, if you have no job, you don't eat, then you will respect. You will show honor to people. You will fear God and you know where you're coming from. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul said, once I've seen cast down, but I've never seen destruction. I have seen that they have persecuted me, but my God has not forsaken me yet. So David in one, Psalm 124 said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, when they rose up against me, their rig would have consumed me fast, quick. He said, when my enemies came against me, they would have fought destroy my life. But blessed be the Lord who did not give us as prey to their teeth. It says the snare is broken, but we are what? Escape. The good news is the escape. You have what? Escape. 
Now, let me tell you something. A little bit then. For David to say this, he knew what he was coming through. He was coming from. Let me show you. Maybe we know David in the Bible as king. David, the man that God loved. And in the Bible, one point, we're going to pray that prayer. Father, give me a token of your goodness. A token of what? Your goodness. This prayer was prayed in the forest. David was born to a woman called Nived. Nesbeth. Now, David's mother got pregnant of David in the point where she had a choice to abort David or to take shame, go through shame to have David. Because that was the time that the Bible says, uh, that, well, that was the time that it was recorded, not in the Bible, but in the other Hebrew, Hebrew books, that when David's mother, uh, before David's mother conceived David, the father who was Jesse, who was serving in the in the in the in the in the Sahindrin as a scribe as a judge, because he was the man that feared God and was the man that was doing perfectly. But his descendants came from Africa or Asia or somewhere you cannot really fit in here. I just using an example. His descendants was coming from a place called Moabite, because Jesse was also a descendant of Ruth, and Ruth was born to. Uh, Sambo called Boaz. And so how can a foreigner marry to an indigenous, indigenous man? And it was a taboo for an, a Jew to marry a foreigner. But this happened by God's divine orchestration. If God has done it, who will reverse it? If God said you will leave, who can reverse it? If God has promised you that you will make it, who can reverse it? If God said he has blessed you, who is that one who can say you are not blessed? If God said you cannot be destroyed, no one can destroy you. If God said you have not been cast out, no one can cast you out. If God said he has not forsaken you, no one can forsake you. If God said that he has healed you, you are healed. If God said he will not disgrace you, no one can disgrace you. If God said he will not put you to shame, no one can put you to shame. You have a God on your side. Say, I have a God on my side. Say, I have Jehovah on my side. Say, I have a living God on my side. Say, I have Jehovah God on my side. 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 In Jesus' name. Now, let, me, let me just share a little bit. It's an interesting story. So, Jesse was contemplating because it looks as if his, his background is not fit in the society. For example, you are mixed race. <laughs> you don't know whether you belong here. Like some of you. You were born here, isn't it? Mm. Sometimes it comes to a time in your life you don't know whether you are here or you come from where your parents come from. And so you become confused within yourself, especially when opportunities are denying you. You know, this one I deserve it, but something is pressing it out of your hand. So you become a bit confused. That was Jesse's uh, story. And so Jesse made the case with the maid servant they had in the house. That maid servant was also a foreigner. Now, if somebody lived with you after some time, you can release the person out of bondage or out of being a slave. And when the person leaves you, you can marry the person because it's your slave who you have released. And so it's out of contract for you now to take hold of the person and say, I can marry you. So Jesse said, I want to do it that way because I'm being a foreigner because that's why he was being, they say he's a foreigner. The slave is also a foreigner. So if I release my slaves and I, a foreigner marry a foreigner, then there's no problem. So he called the maid servant, made that agreement with the maid servant. The maid servant went to the mistress, who was Nivet, David's mother, and discussed the matter with Nivet. So Nivet called the maid servant and said, let's make a deal. Tonight, I am going to take a place of a maid servant, and you will take a place of a mistress. So where you will live, that's where I will go and sleep. And then I know Jesse will visit. Because I still want to have babies. That night, that deal was, was contracted. And then the result was David's pregnancy. Now, Nisbet was pregnant with David. 
Jesse didn't know how it came. And so to, de to Jesse, Nevers has committed adultery. But Nevers also will not tell how David came about in the womb. The brothers, the, all the brothers were against the mother. They wanted even to kill the mother before David was born. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when David was born, he was not accepted in the family. Because he was more or less like an illegal child. How? Who is your father? And who gave birth to you? Our father has not slept with, with our mother. So how come? And so when you read Psalms, you will see David says most of these things. So if it had not been for the Lord on his side, mother would have aborted him. Glory to God. Maybe some of us, that's our story. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, we don't know the circumstance that led to our pregnancy and we being born. Our mothers would have aborted us. But God said, you will live. And if God permitted you to live, then God will not kill you before your time. And will not allow anybody also to kill you before your time. No power, no spirit, no sorcery, no enchantment will be able to stand against our destiny. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so, when David was born, brothers didn't like him. To a point, David said, even my brother, I'm a stranger in my own blood to my brothers. Didn't David say that? He said it. I am even a stranger in my father's home. Why? Why? Because he wasn't accepted. And so, in the, in the town, anything that happened was David. Anything that happened was David. If somebody foul, God stole him, they will say, wait till David come. We'll ask him. If somebody still wait till every, every evil thing that happened, it was David. To a point, David said, I had enough. I had enough with people. Let me go to the bush where I will not have any contact with man. And then I will have contact with Jehovah God. Amen. What you are going through, whatever it may be, is a sign and opportunity for you to get closer to your God. God, had it not been that, you would not know God. Had it not been that, you would even be serious with God. So that thing has come so that you will be serious and call unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the bush, David will rise up in the morning and cry to God. David will pick up a phone call and that is to God, Jehovah. And then the, the Jeremiah 3333, that is the David, David's dialing tone. No 999. No, sex is said, darling, to was a straight, straight, call upon me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things you don't know. So David will rise up in the morning and call unto God. He said, I will rise in the morning will I call unto God. He will call unto the name of afternoon. He will call unto the name of evening. He will call unto the name of the Lord. Uh, in the night, he will call unto the name of the Lord. And the Bible said, David said, for thou art my shepherd, my God. If you begin to make God your God, he becomes your shepherd. He said, do I walk through the the valley of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Listen to this. Listen. In the bush, when God set, David set his table, is the table is prepared before lions, bear, and then evil beasts in the bush. And so one time David said, and when he was giving his, um, his, uh, his CV, I mean his personal experience to Saul, he said, I have killed the bear and I have killed the lion. That means that he the Lord set the table before him in the presence of wild beasts. My God. And he said, if that is where his cup runneth over. And so he came up and said, if bear could not destroy me, if lion could not kill me, then goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. My God. Now hear this. If, if, if it had not been for the Lord on the side of David, who will remember him in the bush? Have you ever seen somebody that lived in the bush that they, they have read newspaper that there's advert for position in town before? No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So in the bush... It was God. When we were far back in where we came from, it was God. 
And so if we are here, it was God. Yeah. In our mother's womb, it was God. Yeah. And when we we're born, it was God. When we we're growing up, it was God. Where we have gotten to, it was God. Whatever we have, it is God. And if God be God, then let God arise and let our enemies be found liars. Hallelujah. Yeah. God said, enough of the bush life. I will have to introduce this one. I will announce him and he will be remembered. Mm. One day, the Lord remembrance found David. And when he was called in, the Bible says that that day his story changed. Don't shift. If he has moved away from the place God positioned him to go through tough times, he would have missed the opportunity of being a king. Who can stand before Goliath except one who do not have experience of the town, but the experience of the bush? Mm -mm -mm. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Who can have a story that I was sick, but God healed me, except that one who has been sick before? Who can have an experience or a testimony that I was barren, but now I have or I'm, I'm fruitful, except somebody who has gone through that situation before? Who can have a story to say? Except you have experienced something in your life before. So Paul said, we are troubled on every side, but we are not destroyed. Put on the board for me, please. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Let me read it, and then we will pray. Somebody being blessed. Somebody being blessed. I prophesy, if David was not aborted in the womb, may your dream never be aborted. Uh, uh, if David was not left in the bush and the Lord remembered him, may God remember you in every situation you have found yourself. Things that they said cannot work for you. I prophesy that from today, they will begin to work for your favor. Those who have rejected you from today, may they come looking for you. Those who pull you down, make you perplexed. From today, may they come and celebrate you. That office that suck you. May that office regret sucking you. That place that they said they don't need you anymore. May that place never be the same again. The Bible says a nation that will not serve you will cease to live. I prophesy over your life. Every destiny helper that will fail to do the assignment. May they never have rest. May they never have their peace. May your angels never fail in their visitation. May you never lose hope. 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 In the name of Jesus. I pray that every covering and every veil that stop you from your next level. May that covering catch fire and may that veil be destroyed. Anything the enemy has laid in wait for your life just to trouble you and to make you purpose. I pray that may that thing catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Whichever way they came against you, may Jehovah God arise and cause them to return in seven different ways. In the sea, in the river and the wind and the, and the storm that is blowing against your life I prophesy that from today may that storm cease may that pain cease may that sickness disappear that disease run away from your life that struggle leave you that trouble leave you that stress leave you that depression leave you anything that is not for you I command it out in the name of Jesus I command it out from your life in the name of Jesus I command it out from your life in the name of Jesus I command it out from your life say I will not shift say I will not shift glory to God he says but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured great fight of affliction.
expression. Life is full of battle. And it's full of contentions. And so, Jesus said, after the John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, which is life, suffers so what? Violent. And he take one who is also violent to take it by force. Now, sometimes, many a time, we tend to be that um, it's, it's, it's right, We're interpreting it that way. Sometimes it take them that are, that are violent. They can pray this and this. No. Another way of interpreting this, it take them who are stubborn to the will of the enemy. They are stubborn. The enemy say you are down. They say, no, 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 no lie. I'm not down. They know things are tough. They say, well, I'm strong. But God is with me. It take people who have got stubborn faith to take that kingdom by force. The husband is beating you, but you said this marriage until God said it's over. It's not over. The wife doesn't respect you, but you stand and say, God change the story. Ah, the children are getting out of fun. You want to lift up a prayer and say, Father, remember my seed. Because you said my children shall be the seed God has blessed. And so remember your word and your covenant concerning them and turn them around. Hallelujah. He said, remember those things. That, 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 see, have you, do you ever sit down and remember the day that maybe you were very sick and the Lord healed you? Do you remember that? And if God, the same God that healed you is the same God that today, if you don't have money, will give you. If God watched over your life so the enemy could not destroy you, then Jehovah God is the same God that will give you that job. That desire you have in your heart, remember that God has made you go through something and has brought you out before. And so if God did that, then you will do it again. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? So he said, remember those former days you fought, you endured. Endurance means that it's not easy, but you went through. You for they forced you to do some stuff you didn't even like, but you went through it. The Lord did not leave you in the midst, of, I mean, in the middle of the tunnel. You saw a light out, and suddenly, before you know, you are out of the tunnel. And so if God brought you out of the tunnel, then this tunnel, you will come out Amen. again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there was a time that um, the people of Israel came to a Red Sea. They could not know what to do. Jehovah God opened the mouth and swallowed up the waters in their way. <laughs> so the Bible de described that the water parted. It cannot be, in the natural sense, the fact is that the waters cannot part. But God stood in. And the Lord swallowed up the waters in their way. If God swallowed up the waters in the way of them today, whatever troubles you, God will swallow it up. If it's a sickness, God will swallow it up. If depression, God will swallow it up. If it's worry of life, God will swallow it up. If anything affecting your destiny, God will swallow it up. So that your way will be clear. For you to walk on ground on on a, on, a, on a dry ground, because He has promised you, and He will never fail. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. He said, "Remember, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, gazing stock, and both by reproaches and affliction, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were were so used, gazing stock, gazing stock, me, you were laughing stock." Have you ever endured that time before when people were giggling about you? That sometimes you, you go past people and you turn just to listen if they are talking about you because there's something you know they can say about you. Have you endured that before? The Lord said you went through. Remember, you went, you went through. And then also reproaches. Now a reproach is something that is like a scar on you, a label. They can say because of the, and then they, you are named by that thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that thing becomes like a reproach. And because of that, there are places you could not go. Even now, you can go into your life and see there's something called a reproach, which is preventing you from doing something you want to do, but you cannot do. But tonight, or this afternoon, every reproach will be run away. 
Say every reproach over my life shall roll away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me just quickly go through and then we we'll go. Say, for ye had compassion of me, my bones, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. No, we we'll go to the 35. If that is it, if that is it, if you have endured affliction, reproach, pain, if you have endured lack, rejection, shame, disappointment, if you have endured that before, then God, and you are still living and holding to your, your God, coming to church, irrespective of what, you are still in the house, in the, in the presence of God, then God is saying that, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Cast it not away. Don't shift. If you have stood with God till this time, then please, 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 hold on. Don't shift. Cast not that confidence you have in your God. Cast it not. Because it's in the same confidence God will do that which you are looking for today. If he did it for you yesterday, he will do it again. 36 says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and that he shall come or come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But, hear this, but if you shift, if you move out of way, if you disconnect dislocate your faith. If any man or woman draw back my soul, shall have no pleasure. And if you don't know what God has for you in the next moment, please, please don't shift. Don't give up on your God. Hold on to God. Ah, uh, you don't know what God has in store for you tomorrow. Uh, today is what you see, but tomorrow is what you don't know. The other day I was sharing and I said something. If some of you remember when we were in Greenford, is it Greenford or Hayes? There about in the not old. I said something that yesterday was in the tomb. It's buried. You cannot bring it back again. Today is where? In your mouth. And I said, tomorrow is still in the womb, yet to be born. Nobody has seen your tomorrow. Nobody has seen what God is about to unfold in your life. You are still pregnant of your tomorrow. You are still pregnant of that destiny which no one has seen before. You are still pregnant of that hope, that future, that money, that sources, that prosperity you are looking for. It is still in your womb, yet about to be born. Don't cast away your confidence. Because if you do, Bible says, I will have no pleasure in you. Jesus is coming again. Will affliction, Paul said, Paul said, what, what can separate us from the love of God? Is that affliction? Is that sickness? Is that lack? Poverty? Rejection? Disappointment? Shame? Troubles? Problems? It says nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Don't shift. Don't cast away your confidence because he has great recompense of reward. God has ordained life in that confidence. That faith, people don't value in your hand. God has ordained life in it. And in that day, that is where you will have a contact to take to your God. I have fought a good fight and I have finished well. Rise to your feet and let's begin to pray right now. Say the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Say today I stand upon the word of God and pray. Lord, increase my faith in you. Increase my love for you. Increase my first love for the things of God. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. 
Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Increase our faith, oh God. 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 Increase our faith. 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 In you, O God. In you, O God. In you, O God. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Help me to hold on to my confidence. Help me to hold on to my first love. Help me to hold on. Oh God, help me. 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 He said he would destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Veil and covering. Any covering over your life. You are going to lift up a prayer and say, Lord, destroy it. Any covering or veil cast over your family so that nobody can go far. So that nobody can be successful. Any covering or veil cast over your life so that you cannot get to your next level. Any covering cast over your body so you cannot enjoy peace in your body. You are praying right now. The Father, let that covering catch fire. Destroy every covering over my life. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus, Lord, as I clap my hands and lift up my voice in prayer, every evil covering cast over my family, cast over my destiny, cast over my future, cast over my health, as I pray right now, destroy it, 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 destroy, destroy. Destroy every covering of failure. Destroy it. Every covering of rejection. Destroy it. Every covering of infirmity and affliction. Destroy it. Every covering of struggle and problems. Destroy it. Every covering of lack. Oh God. Destroy it. Every covering of our ministry. Destroy that covering and the veil of deception. The veil of deception destroy it destroy it destroy 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 in Jesus name now confess this after me confess this after me say every evil covering and evil veil cast 
over my life I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus say oh God in the name of Jesus destroy every covering of failure every covering of deception every covering of rejection every covering of pain every covering of disease and sickness every covering of problems every covering of destruction every covering of destruction every covering of discouragement every covering of lack poverty destroy 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 lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice something is happening in this place the Lord will swallow up every death in the name of Jesus and the them the enemy has laid a wait for you the Lord will swallow it 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 will swallow 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 in Jesus name now hear this we take this prayer and I hand over the mic pray for two people I hand over the mic um, he says he will swallow up death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces says the Lord I don't know what is that worry but the Lord said I will swallow up that worry I don't know what that situation confronting your life the Lord said I will swallow up that situation every death determined against your life your family member or whatever is for you we pray that the Lord will swallow up that death any miracle that is due your life that the enemy is delaying or is holding on to it you are praying that God swallow up that delay every spirit of delay every spirit of shame every spirit of confusion every spirit of death will be swallowed up say Lord Jesus as I clap my hands and pray swallow up everything the enemy has left in my life swallow it up every death swallow up every death swallow up in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and pray 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 somebody lift up your voice in prayer lift up your voice lift up your voice lift up your voice and the Lord God will swallow up death, will swallow up poverty, will swallow up sickness, will swallow up deception, will swallow up fear, will swallow up anxiety. Whatever is confronting your life, the Lord will swallow it up. Whatever is delaying your progress, whatever is limiting you, the Lord will swallow up. Every limitation is being swallowed up. Every disgrace is being swallowed up in the tent, fighting your life fighting your destiny fighting your family fighting your children fighting your ministry fighting your progress the Lord will swallow it up right now lift up your voice somebody pray something is happening right now something something is happening it's happening it's happening it's happening it's happening untimely death affliction the Lord is Swallow it up in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, swallow up every pain, swallow up every disgrace, swallow up every worry and anxiety, swallow it up every delay, swallow up every lack in my life swallow it up anything 
that is fighting my progress and my goodness swallow it up whatever is limiting my life swallow it up every barrier that is set in my way swallow it up every recipe stopping me from making progress oh god swallow it up whatever is affecting my destiny my future my marriage my home my family oh god swallow it up 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 swallow it 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 in jesus name say i shall live to declare the mighty works of the living god in jesus name brother i saw that you have knelt down and your eyes you've been anointed to see things that you have never seen before as some places your life to go that you need to see it afar so that when you are going you need to have confidence that God is with you the Bible says that Moses sent spies to go and view the land that God is taking them on to. They came back. Just, uh, Jacob and um, Joshua and Caleb said, the land floweth with milk and honey. And not that alone, we are able. Why? Because they have seen opportunity in that period. Other people saw the confrontations and the giants in the land. Joshua said, I don't see that. I don't see what others see. I see what God see. And what God see is that the land flowed with milk and honey. The people said, we can't fight Goliath. Even Saul said, you cannot. David said, I see opportunity in the same. You see, that trouble, there's opportunity. That if you're able to endure, you will have a testimony. That lead to say to somebody, to let the person know that you're God. It's alive. Amen. Amen. I'll anoint your eyes and from tonight Amen. or from this time forth, you will see in dreams, in visions, in imagination, you will see that God is taking you somewhere and place, will place you so that you become a pillar Amen. of your family. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, can you kneel for me? Can we all close our eyes, stretch forth your hands towards him? That God, you do and no one can reverse it. Open the eyes of your servant. And as you have shown your servant to God, let him become life and live a moment. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift up your servant. Unto you, O oh God, as I saw, so let it be. Oh God, 
as you show me. Open his eyes from today to see and say, let his spiritual eyes be open and the eyes of his understanding open. Let this one see in dreams. Yes, Lord. He will see. A hand is pointing ahead of him saying, See, Lord, let him see beyond the physical. Let him see in dreams. Let him see in visions. Give him the eye to see in imaginations. In the name of Jesus. Let this eyes become another to the glory of your name. When men are seeing the physical, let him see beyond the physical. Let that grace fall upon him. Anointing of a seer. Let it be released upon his life. The grace to see and declare. Let it, oh God, be seen. Move mightily in every dimension of this life. Perfect your will, oh God. And let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, open these eyes. And from today, let there be testimonies. That after this anointing, my eyes are seeing greater and mighty things I have no idea of. Take him to another level. And let him become a testimony to his family. In Jesus' name, amen. I hear report, 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 report. Do me a favor, turn it off for me, please. Thank you. I hear report, report, report. I pray for you that the report of God stand. Every report of man, wherever it has been delivered to you or about to be delivered to you, may it become a lie and a false report. And may the report of Jehovah God speak for you. Anything they have sent as a news coming to disturb you, I pray for you. That may that news turn around to favor you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That which came to cause fear, may God turn it to give you boldness to believe in him. That the report of the Lord is what you believe in. I pray for you right now that the grace of the Almighty be released upon your life. That no report will weigh you down. No report of any doctor will disturb your peace. In the name of Jesus. Whoever will come up with that thing, we pray that it will not materialize. Cancel! In the name of Jesus. Lose him. And let her go free. From today, the report of Jehovah God will speak for you. And you will have your peace in Jesus' name. You will be far from fear. You will be far from affliction. Anything that will earmark and assign against you in a matter of time, we pray that it will fail in the assignment. May the hand of God be so strong for you, for, upon you to protect you and preserve your health in the name of Jesus. Every health issue waiting to manifest, we command it to die by fire. And we deliver you right now out of every health issue. We release strength and perfect help over your life. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Lord, for touching your daughter and releasing virtue of good health over every part of his body. 
and every part of her organ. In Jesus' name. Receive it. And let it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. The, the favor of God. The favor of God. Take you through life. The favor of God. Pray for you. Pray for you. Pray for you. And the spirit of counsel. He remains upon you. So that every decision you take in life will not be taken in haste. But will be done according to the will of God. What your parents have gone through, you will not repeat them. Everything they have suffered, I pray that the favor of God exempt you out of it. Every family history that people repeat in your family, you are exempted from today. You have escaped it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever block the access of peace, today will remove it. And I declare favor upon your life. Upon your life. Where your strength will fail, may favor take you forward. Hallelujah. Where your wisdom could not get you, may favor cause you to exceed. I pray that the hand of God come upon you to make you the eye and the ear of your family. Excellence, I hear. The spirit of excellence be released into your spirit. And may favor take you forward. Favor. Receive it. 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 Favor. Receive it now. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Please hold the hand of and to hold your hands, I pray for you. I'm seeing something that is connected to two of you. Lord, I pray for your daughters. And I ask for peace in the family and the household they belong. Peace. Every contentions, every contentions and battles that people fought and they could not overcome. Which wants to stand in for them also to fight. We pray that those contentions from today be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Every evil cloth or garment which has been passed on. Garment. Pass on garment. Pass on garment. I pray that in your time, may that garment catch fire. That garment catch fire. In the name of Jesus. You will not wear any cloth that is not for your good. And you will not repeat or wear any cloth that will bring dishonor. The cloth that people wore, that when they are growing, then they tend to, 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 to grow like children. I mean, they become like children. It will not come near you in the name of Jesus. Every cloth, every garment that has been passed on, we pray that it will not find you in the name of Jesus. The Lord himself cover you with the blood and the Lord preserve your life in Jesus' name. Jehovah God give you long life and peace in family. Anywhere there is confusion and chaos in the families, I pray that may that thing cease Amen. from now. Amen. I declare peace Amen. over your life, Amen. over your body. Amen. I declare peace Amen. within you, Amen. the peace of God. Amen. That's the presence of understanding. Amen. May it be released Amen. unto you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it now. 
Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We are praying for our papa. We are praying for the bishop of the house. We are lifting a prayer unto God. That God, you are still in your miracle working business. Remember your son. And wherever he is, restore him. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Clap your hands and pray, somebody. Clap your hands and pray. Sata. Kata labaya. Akazata bata kataya. Akosapa kale mahazia. Ifazu kata bazi kataya. Ikalabo shandele baya. Ibrasun nili mahazia. Asante katu zaba. Akantu kabali kataya. Ikataya delebe. Ibratole bayata. Ibratole bayata. Ikatala bayata. Ikatala bayata. Ikatabayataya. Ibatabalaba. Ibatabalaba. Ibatabaya. Ikatabaya. Ibatabaya. Ikatabaya. 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 Ikataya. 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 In Jesus' name. And you will rid of the land of evil beasts. And you said upon this mountain you will destroy the covering. And remove the veil. We stand upon your word. Upon this mountain. Upon this church. You set your servant to lead your people. Father. Every beast. Every dog. Anybody that is sent. To afflict. We declare today affliction back to sender. Infirmity back to sender. The work of that dog has failed. In the name of Jesus. We lift up your servant before you, Lord. Touch him and restore his health. Let every weakness go and let strength take place in every part of the body. We prophesy healing and decree and declare that perfect healing has come. Perfect health is released. Thank you. Let the angels of the Lord put on him a new garment. Garment of peace. And perfect health. Perfect everything that concerns your son. And restore him, O oh God. Let him stand on your altar again and testify of the goodness and the mercies of the Lord. We decree and declare no more affliction. No more Affliction will not repeat itself. It will not happen for the second time. In the days of ignorance, we did not pray. But now we are lifting a prayer as a church. Let Peter go free. Let your servant, Pastor Evans, go free. Let him, oh God, escape that which has been determined against the family. He is escaped in the name of Jesus. He will live to declare your mighty works because Jesus is on the throne and Jesus is Lord. By your virtue, O oh God, let your servant be strong and be restored in Jesus' name. We send the good news unto him that the spirit of the Lord is upon us. We have prayed and healing, strength, restoration, deliverance has come unto him. We thank you, Lord. I pray for his family, pray for his children, 
thank you for the good work you have strengthened their hands to do. I pray for more grace unto them. I pray for more grace unto them. Open your good treasures, O oh God, and bless them. In Jesus' name. Let it work better for them. Let it do well with them. In Jesus' name. We bless you. Give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.